Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy, and in this video I want to show you how to install and get working the amazing uh, projectile debug mode by the one. Um, and this is probably a mod that you've seen working in Wobo's videos, where he's uh, detailing um, how bullets travel through the air in Daisy, and it is an absolutely fantastic mod to play around with because, as you can see you can see where your bullets go and you can see the drop that they have and how far Daisy tracks bullets as well and you can even do some experimenting like shooting through things and then seeing see if we can do one seeing where the bullets go afterwards we got a bit of a ricochet there didn't we did we get a ricochet off the ground let's reload No, but if you go, if we, for example, were to go over to the building over there, okay, let's go over there. What you can do is you can mess around shooting bullets through surfaces to get a real good feel of um, uh, what bullets, what surfaces you can shoot through and which ones you can't. So, for example, if we shoot into here, we can see that the concrete stops the. Uh, stops the bullets but if we come over here let's have a look let's see if we can shoot through this shed yeah see you see the bullets going through I think they keep going <laughs> so it really is a really fantastic mod to play around with Ooh. now this is going to be quite complicated um, because in order to get it working, it took me quite a while of messing around and doing various things. Um, so you may find that actually just doing it the normal way works for you. But what happened with me is that I could never get it working the normal way. Look at all these traces. Let's reload. So if we just fire a bullet into the air, you see how it... See how it drops off? It's amazing that D Daisy follows this for long. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. So what you want to do is go over to uh, the Daisy uh, Steam Workshop and have a look for pro Projectile Debug. I'll put a link in the description below this video and you'll want to subscribe to it. Now, I am counting on the fact that to get this working, you've already got a local server running. Um, and you're familiar with how mods work with that local server and you've also had a go with getting daisy offline mode working as well and also you're familiar with um, vpp admin as well because that's what we're going to kind of use and also playing around with the init.c file as well okay now what i would suggest you do is when, you, when you've downloaded project De debug mode to your um to your daisy workshop um, what it will say is um, you need to do some copying so it'll end up sort of here in your workshop here like that and then if you go into it you can open up the readme and it tell it tells you basically what you do um, da -da 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 -da. after subscribing to the on the steam workshop using the daisy official launcher navigate to the workshop tab that we've done copy the directory project debug mode to the root of your daisy client folder and then there's a batch file that's included as well and then you run startup diag.bat so what you do is once you've downloaded that you would come out of that you would right click you copy that like so and you go up and then you would paste it here so you go paste and as you can see i've already got it there and then when you go into project de uh, pro projectile debug, you'll see the start.dag uh, batch file, which is the thing that starts it. And if we if we look at it, what you've got to do is, as of 1.20, you need to add these two lines to it. New errors are warning one. New errors are warnings one. There, you need to add those, and they are actually detailed in the description below. I would recommend that whenever you're installing a mod, if you're having trouble, go and have a look at the descriptions and the, the comments um, down below, because often if people have come across problems, they'll they'll put them in that way. 
Now, the problem that I had, and if you're watching this and saying, you know, this, this, is, this is dumb, Rob, you should have done it another way. The problem I had with it was that I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get an admin uh, mod to work with it at the same time. So, and the problem with that is, although the, the, the project debug would start, and it would start up daisydiag.exe, my character was just a plain character. Um, which which was a, which was a bit of a bummer because I needed to spawn some things in, and so what I did was um, I kn I knew I needed to to have a uh, an, an admin um, uh, program with it as well. But the problem was when I tried to load admin mods at the same time, the admin mod wouldn't recognise that I was a um, power user, so to give me the authority to log stuff in. So. In the end, this is what I did to kind of get around all this so that I could spawn in with weapons and also I could spawn whatever weapons I needed and I could teleport around the map and all the, that sort of stuff. So, the first thing I did was that I edited the um, uh, init.c uh, file. Um, now, if you go into projectile debug, here we go, where you've copied it to, you go into the missions and you see the the mission file for Chernus is just just there, which is really cool. And then if you go into the init, you can open up the init.c, and it'll just have a normal init.c in it, which which spawns your player in with a you know with a kind of a random plum and, and stuff like that. But what I recommend you do instead is if you go to my GitHub, and I'll put a link in below in the description below this video, change it to this military loadout as well. Um, and what you basically do is you just copy the bit from class custom mission mission server all the way down to the bottom like that to that bit and copy that into your init.c so from there downwards and then save that um, and what happens then is when you start up daisydiag.exe through the batch file the first time your player will just have normal you know they'll be dressed in rags but when they die and they spawn in again they'll have a gun with them which is really cool so you basically start off with a gun and if they die they'll um, they'll come back with a gun and they've got all that they've got like military equipment on them so they look look pretty cool just just like you kind of kind of you can see with this guy you know so you can start playing around with playing around with it straight away the next thing you'll want to do is have some sort of admin you know so that you can teleport around the map so that you can um, spawn stuff in. Uh, where we got with the spawns item spawn, so you can spawn in weapons or whatever you want to do, so you can you can test things out. Now, what in order to do this, what you need to do is you need to go into the start diag bat, and we need to turn on a mod. But the first thing we need to make sure that we've got this mod in the correct place. And obviously, the weird thing is that. Um, the uh, the batch file is calling on the the, the mod from within our daisy uh, exe folder here, you know, this one here, which is a bit odd because this isn't where mods live. So what you need to do is go into the workshop and copy out uh, cf and copy out uh, vpp admin tools in this case. So copy them out and then just paste them into here so they're right at the top this way when you put then the uh, addresses for these mods into um, the batch file it'll recognize them so then you go into your batch file again for this and you'll see at the top where it says set and as you can see i've got mod equals cf a semicolon project of debug semicolon vpp admin tools so that means that when daisy diag.exe starts it will start with these as well which is all well and good. However, it won't recognise, it wouldn't recognise for me anyway, that I was um, an admin and had authority to use um, VPP admin. And this is where you must have already set up VPP admin on a local server so it's all set up and working. What I will do is I'll put a link in the description below this video to a video on setting up VPP admin um, if you haven't done it already. So, and then what you do is once it's set and run uh, set up and running on your local server, what you can do is if you go to your local server, so if we go to here, so this is where my local server is. What we want is the config folder. So this is the one that's got all the settings in. It might be called profiles, it might be con config, it might be called settings, but it's got it's where all your mods um, 
keep all their data, including for VPP admin, all the super user data. So what, what I did was I then copy the config folder, go back up to my Daisy folder and just pasted it there. So you can see it's there. So if we go into it, go into config and there you can see we've got the folder for, it's just simply the folder for VPP admin. Again, this must have been set up already because to set up VPP admin for the first time, you need to go and need to put a password in and put your Steam code and Steam data and all that sort of stuff in. Um, and once you've done that, we can then make sure that the batch file refers to this in the batch file. So we know it's called config, the folder. So again, if we go back to our startdiag.bat, what you can see is here is I've added the line dash profiles equals config. So what I'm telling the batch file here is that this the, the, the folder name for where the profiles is kept is called config, and I've added it there and I've added it there as well. So that means that allows then VPP admin to look into that folder, see who the super user is and go, ah, okay, that's Rob's Steam ID. Fantastic, let him spawn stuff in and use VPP admin tools to go along. So that works that way. And then the other thing I did was I went into the server dz.config as well because I wanted it to be um, daytime when I started the server up. So, so again, we're in Daisy. Um, we go into VPP admin tools. We go, sorry. We go into um, uh, Project L Debug. We go into the uh, server dz.config here. So we edit with Notepad++. And you just go down and I change the server time to nine o'clock in the morning. So I think it says system time at the moment. But if you just copy this, this uh, time here, over to here and then change it to nine o'clock in the morning and change the server time acceleration to one at least it'll be daytime when you turn it on now once you've got vp plus admin working you can change the time of day and the weather and all that sort of stuff but quite a lot of the time with this sort of stuff it's just nice if when you spawn in it's daytime you've got a kit you've got a weapon you can start playing it around playing around with it now the other thing that you'll need to do as well is when you start it up, go into the options, go into controls, go into configure key bindings, go to unsorted, and you'll probably see that the increased debug shape lifetime and decreased debug shape lifetime are just on up and down. So click on them and change them to page up and page down. Otherwise, when you fire a bullet, the trace disappears fairly quickly. But once you've done this, what I can do now is I can now increase the time it takes for bullets to well the trace anyway to, to, to disappear so now what we could do is if we wanted to we could go home go to teleport tools um, let's go over here and then we can really have some fun firing the bullets into buildings and seeing so say imagine someone's behind this door we can open the door and we can see the tr the paths that bullets are taking as we shoot. See, as you can see the paths that they take after they've gone through. It's absolutely amazing. This <laughs> it really is very very cool indeed, and it's just just a fantastic training aid. You know, just to sh I mean, imagine you could um, you could share your screen with a new player and say, look, so. You know, look at this stuff that we can do. So imagine someone's hiding behind that door. Let's open it up. Well, in fact, we can just look this way. You can see that the bullets have gone straight through the door. Now, they've stopped at this wall, but they've gone straight through that door, which is absolutely fantastic. So some big thanks have to go out. That's metal, isn't it? So nothing's going to go through there. How about this wooden fence? Oh, that stopped stuff. That went through there. Here comes a zombie. Oh, let's climb up here. So some big thanks have to go out for this. I mean, of course, to Dewan for creating this amazing mod. Um, it is very, very cool indeed. Um, and also to, um, it's got to go to Wobo as well, because he really showed us um, 
the, the, how you can use this data to really understand Daisy and the bullock mechanics in particular in this case behind Daisy and I don't think most of us would be the players we are in Daisy without the help of Wobo um, but anyway so there we go now lots of people if you're watching this video say Rob you've just made this way too complicated just follow the instructions that are included with the mod and it works then great but I had to do all this stuff to get it to work for me but I'm very pleased that I've got it working now because I'm looking forward to um, playing around and seeing what stuff I can shoot through and throw grenades and all that sort of stuff in the game as well. If you found this video useful, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Um, and of course, I'll uh, see you again soon.